Welcome to Wall Street News Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. BOJ pulls back from risk asset buying in sign of normalization. China finds iPhone maker Foxconn $2,800 amid major tax probe. BOJ to end negative interest rates in 2024, over 80% of economists say, Reuters poll. Line in the sand, Australian industry lauds conviction of second global cryptocurrency kingpin. British band Coldplay is pro-Palestinian, Malaysia's PM says. BOJ pulls back from risk asset buying in sign of normalization. Bloomberg. The Bank of Japan, BOJ, is likely to make zero purchases of real estate investment trusts, JREITS, this year and its smallest annual purchase of exchange-traded funds, ETFs, since 2010 as it moves towards a more conventional policy. The BOJ has yet to step into the JREIT market this year after making purchases every year since 2010. The lack of purchasing reflects the robust growth in the markets and the BOJ's desire to limit its distortion of markets and step back from its massive stimulus program. China finds iPhone maker Foxconn $2,800 amid major tax probe. Bloomberg. Foxconn Technology Group subsidiary, Foxconn Industrial Internet Company, has been fined 20,000 yuan, $2,800, by Chinese tax authorities for overstating expenses. The subsidiary, located in Wuhan, was penalized for its accounting of research and development expenses in 2021 and 2022. This comes as China is conducting a broader investigation into the operations of the iPhone maker. The investigation includes looking into Foxconn's tax affairs in Guangdong and Jiangsu, as well as land use in Hubei and Hunan. Foxconn founder Terry Goh, who is running for Taiwan's presidential election, has said that the Chinese government would not dare touch his business empire. BOJ to end negative interest rates in 2024, over 80% of economists say, Reuters poll. Reuters. Over 80% of economists polled by Reuters believe the Bank of Japan, BOJ, will end its negative interest rate policy next year, suggesting the central bank is getting closer to exiting its controversial monetary settings. The poll found that 85% of economists said the BOJ would end the policy by end of 2022 up from 63% in October and 52% in September. Line in the sand, Australian industry lauds conviction of second global cryptocurrency kingpin. ABC. The founder of Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, has pleaded guilty to money laundering charges and resigned as CEO, sparking concerns for Australian consumers. Binance will continue to operate under a new CEO and pay a $4 billion penalty. Several of Australia's largest cryptocurrency trading platforms, including SWYFTX, use Binance to complete trades for Australian consumers. Australian exchanges are not expected to be affected by the situation at Binance, but if Binance were to close, Australian users would risk losing access to their assets. British band Coldplay is pro-Palestinian, Malaysia's PM says. South China Morning Post. Coldplay, a British rock band, has been accused of being pro-Palestinian by Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, who said he would discuss the issue with the country's federal territories Mufti. The Mufti and other religious conservatives have called for the cancellation of the band's concert, scheduled for Wednesday. Coldplay has been a vocal supporter of the Palestinian cause for several years. China allows a trickle of critical minerals exports ahead of graphite curbs. Bloomberg. China has resumed exports of germanium and gallium, two minerals crucial to high-tech manufacturing, after a two-month hiatus caused by export controls imposed for national security reasons. The controls, which require exporters to apply for licenses and report customer details, were imposed in August amid escalating trade tensions with the US and Europe. China is the world's largest importer of commodities but holds an outsized advantage in the production and processing of critical minerals used in high-tech industries, giving it leverage in trade disputes. The U.S. and its allies are seeking alternative sources to de-risk their supply chains. U.S. space radar operator Leo Labs targets insurance market in Japan. Nikkei Asia. Leo Labs, a U.S.-based space radar startup, is expanding its customer base to include insurance companies and space debris removers. The company tracks satellites and space debris in low Earth orbit, providing data to launch companies and satellite operators to help them avoid collisions. Leo Labs also hopes to provide data to Japanese insurers to help them better underwrite space missions. The company operates 10 radars across six sites and plans to increase this to over 20. Leo Labs CEO Dan Sepperly said he hopes the company's commercial services will generate more sales than government contracts in five years' time. Singapore jails middle-aged repeat thief who stole dozens of boxes of Panadol. South China Morning Post. 
A man in Singapore who had previously been convicted for stealing Panadol has been sentenced to two years in jail for stealing the same painkiller again. SNG Chow Sim, 51, stole 66 boxes of Panadol from a supermarket, worth a total of $970. He was caught on CCTV and arrested two days later, but refused to reveal what he did with the stolen goods. SNG had previously been sentenced to 19 months in jail for stealing Panadol worth $187. Hong Kong Exchange launches digital IPO platform Feeny to boost listings. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, has launched a digital platform aimed at boosting initial public offerings, IPOs, by speeding up settlements and reducing investor risks. The fast interface for new issuance, Feeny, will shorten the settlement cycle to two days from five by modernizing and digitalizing Hong Kong's IPO settlement process. The new platform will hasten the listing process and bring Hong Kong in line with other listing venues, analysts said. Why China's ties with Russia, North Korea will not serve Beijing's interests. South China Morning Post. South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol has called for China to distance itself from Russia and North Korea, citing Beijing's ambivalent stance on a Moscow-Pyongyang alliance. Yoon stated that China's interests do not align with those of North Korea or Russia, and that China's alignment with the two countries would not serve its national interests. While South Korea is strengthening its ties with the US and Japan, it has also sought to improve relations with China. However, China's non-interventionist approach towards the deepening ties between North Korea and Russia contradicts its principles in dealing with international affairs. Yoon argued that pursuing a three-way cooperation with North Korea and Russia would violate UN Security Council resolutions and international norms, and would not be helpful for China's international reputation. The South Korean president warned that if Russia provided military tech support to North Korea, it would threaten South Korea's national security and regional peace. South Korean diplomats reportedly sought to arrange a summit between Yoon and President Xi Jinping, but were unsuccessful. Warren Buffett, 93, donates more Berkshire stock, assures I feel good. Reuters. Warren Buffett has donated $866 million of Berkshire Hathaway stock to charity, according to a regulatory filing. Buffett gave 1.5 million Class B shares to the Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation, an organization that works in reproductive health. A further 900,000 Class B shares were donated to charities run by his children Howard, Susan and Peter. The donations come on top of $759 million of stock given away to the same recipients last year. King Charles welcomes South Korea's Yoon, mingles with K-pop band Blackpink. South China Morning Post. South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol and his wife, Kim Kian-hee, were hosted by King Charles and Queen Camilla at Buckingham Palace during a state visit to the UK. The visit is aimed at strengthening trade and defence ties between the two countries. The UK government hopes it will help cement an Indo-Pacific tilt in its foreign and trade policy. Yoon is scheduled to hold talks with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to discuss trade, technology and defence, including a defence agreement to work together to curb smuggling and enforce UN sanctions on North Korea. Asia stocks mixed as Nvidia caps sluggish US day, markets wrap. Bloomberg. Asian stocks traded mixed as the US rally stalled and big tech declined. Nvidia Corp fell in late trading after reporting earnings. Mainland Chinese shares fell at the open, while tech stocks in Hong Kong gained, partially supported by Baidu Incorporated US equity futures edged lower after the Nasdaq 100 index sank 0.6% Tuesday, with Apple Inc., Microsoft Corporation, and Amazon.com Inc. all dropping. Business highlights, record holiday travel crowds expected, Binance founder pleads guilty. Associated Press. Millions of people are expected to travel for Thanksgiving, with record crowds predicted at airports and on roads. The Transportation Security Administration, TSA, expects to screen 2.6 million passengers on Tuesday and 2.7 million passengers on Wednesday, while Sunday is expected to draw the largest crowds with an estimated 2.9 million passengers. AAA forecasts that 55.4 million Americans will travel at least 50 miles from home during the holiday period, with roads likely to be most congested on Wednesday. In other news, the founder of Binance, Changping Zhao, has pleaded guilty to a felony charge related to his failure to prevent money laundering on the cryptocurrency exchange platform. Binance has also agreed to a $4 billion settlement with the US government over violations of the Bank Secrecy Act and apparent violations of sanctions programs. Zhao has stepped down as the company's chief executive.
The United Auto Workers UAW, union is aiming to expand its membership to non-union automakers across the industry, including foreign automakers with U.S. operations and electric vehicle makers. UAW President Sean Fain secured significant concessions during contract talks with Detroit's three automakers and now seeks to expand the union's influence. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief via email.